Let's look at the periodic table and realize that because we have similar electron configurations, that means that these guys are going to have similar properties. So because noble gases have the S2P6, then that means they're going to be very similar. They're called a family because of it. These guys are the alkali. They're going to be very similar because what do they have in common? Their outer shell has one in the S. This is a family. These are all very similar because they live within S2. There are properties that we can look and discuss about these elements that will show a pattern as you go down the column and even as you go from left to right. The reason why they show patterns is because of the electron configuration. So, why will members of a group have similar properties again? I just said so. I just said it. Similar, they have the same outer configuration. Okay? We're going to look at three properties, three properties that demonstrate patterns. Periodicity has to do with a repeating pattern. That's why we call it the periodic table. The pattern repeats itself. Periodicals are magazines that come out in a pattern. They come out once a week, or once a month, or once every six months, or once every year. A periodic property. The three properties we're going to look at are ionization energy and atomic and ionic radius. Today, we're going to focus on atomic radius. I can describe atomic radius, what happens to the radii as you go down a period, and why, and what happens to atomic radii as you go down a group, and why. Okay, the two most important concepts that you need to remember are, the first one, effective nuclear force. Effective nuclear force is how attractive a nucleus is to its electrons. Now, in order to truly understand this, you need a little lesson in sociology. What makes a woman beautiful? Well, if you ask the Western world, Western Europe, if you ask Americans, if you ask Canadians, it has to do with their size. They want a Barbie. They want a very thin woman with still curves, but very, very thin. Okay, that among human beings is, a, is the minority. All of Latin America, big swaths of Africa and Asia believe the complete opposite. They believe that a woman of substance, a curvaceous woman, is a beautiful woman. Am I not right here, Marielle? Yes. Marielle, you, can, you will be able to relate to this. Uh, let me tell you a funny story of how my wife learned about this. When we got married, she was 21 years old, and she was a thin, waif-like thing. By American standards, she was drop-dead gorgeous. I still think she is. Okay? Now, I had her come and visit my folks about six months before we were supposed to get married so that she could meet my family. I have, no, I guess for the first time it was almost a year before. Yeah, it was a year before. <laughs> then she came back six months uh, because we had kind of like a, 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 a party, you know, an a engagement party. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first time she met my wicked stepmom. Mm -hmm. um, She's not wicked anymore. She's actually, now that she's like 90 years old, she's become kind of sweet. But at the time, she had no filter. Whatever popped in her mind, 
went through her mouth. So she meets my wife and she looks at her and she goes, oh, Jackie, you're so skinny. <laughs> Which my, really confused my wife because the skinny thing should have been a compliment. But the way she said it and her facial expression conveyed that it was an insult. So she asked about this. And I looked at her, I go, well, sweetheart, this is just difference in culture. In the Latino culture, a, a woman of more substance. Guys, Bad listen, no, you, you got to say, you got to have, got you got to be very sensitive, very sensitive about these things with women. Okay, a woman of substance um, is considered to be very attractive. I think she was trying to tell you that by her estimation, you are too skinny to to be as attractive as she would like for you to be. She goes, oh, you mean it was kind of like a compliment? Well, I go, for you, you should take it as a compliment, okay? But for her, it probably wasn't. Oh, well, you know, she didn't like that, okay? So we get married, and by the way, I don't know why, but within months of marriage, guys, the, the, the woman, even though she's, she may be very young, will start hearing the biological clock ticking. Okay, I would highly recommend that you do what I do, what I did, and buy them a dog. That'll tie them over for a couple of years. <laughs> so she was happy with Andy, our little schnauzer, for a few years, and then she started hearing the biological clock ticking. By this time, we were in our uh, mid to late 20s, and, and we decided, hey, let's just have a baby. So we did, and you know, childbirth is a transformative, um, <laughs> because guys have to be very, very careful with the way they say things. Okay, childbirth transforms a woman's body in marvelous ways. Okay, so after childbirth, she had transformed into even a higher level of beautiness. So we go to South Florida. I'm not saying anything uh, bad. I, okay. We go to South Florida and to show off. I mean, I'm going around going, I made this. Look, it's a baby. You didn't think I could, but look, I did. I made a baby. I'm showing him off to my cousins, to my aunts, to my uncles. And finally, we have to meet my stepmom. She looks at Jack. She goes, oh, Jackie, you look beautiful. You look so good and healthy. I saw my wife's eyes begin to twitch, and then it began to brim with tears. Why? She got it. No, no, this is past pregnancy. This is the, the transformative power of pregnancy and after pregnancy transformed. Notice how delicately I'm putting all this, right? I'm very delicate. Okay, so my wife's eyes started brimming, and as soon as we got in the car, <clears throat> I'm ugly! She said, I'm fat! No, she said, you were beautiful! I know what that means! <laughs> she said, I'm fat! No! You know, I'm, no, and I started telling, the transformative process of childbirth! She didn't buy any of that bull crap. <laughs> so, I realized that this is the problem with having two different cultures. I mean, yeah, and Marielle, you know, you might meet a white guy and, okay, there's going to be some differences in your cultures. He's going to have to deal with that. All right? So, why do I say that? You're sitting there going, what is he getting at? Are we ever going to get back to chemistry? I like this. This is funny. Let's not get into chemistry. Let's not talk to him. Yeah. Okay. No, you know, I don't go off on wild goose chases. There's always a reason. Why? It has to do with effective nuclear force. What does an electron think about a nucleus? The bigger the nucleus the better looking. So electrons stand around at street corners and they see a big fat nuclei going down. They go, oh, baby, hey, you look good. Let me send some neutrinos your way. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, come here, take a look at me. 
Electrons love fat nuclei. If they see a little skinny nuclei walking by, and they go, oh, baby, there's five guys down the three. Eat five hamburgers. Come back. Why? Because skinny nuclei are ugly to them. They're not attracted. It's just, ew, yuck. You okay? Yeah. All right. So let's use guys as an illustration. I used girls one time. I had them in tears. Don't use girls when it comes to weight issues. Don't use them. It is not a good thing to line them up from skinniest to not as skinny. No! Not a good thing! You so Guys! No, I did it. I, I realized it. Alright, Brian, all you guys, come on. Guys don't care. Guys don't care. Guess who's the most attractive? Alright. Go from big to small. Where do I go? All right. All right. Here's her electron, and here's her electron, and here's her electron, and here's her electron, and here's her electron. Okay. All right. By the world standards, this is a little studling. He's a skinny, svelte, muscular thing. Okay, so by North American standards, you would think that everyone is, look at those girls, they're just going crazy over you, you're just such a stud, man. Okay, if you were electrons, what would you be thinking? Ew! Guys, stop. So, this is his electron. What does he, she think of him? Ew, gross. So hold that electron really far. Come on, stretch it, stretch it. All right. Now, he's a little bigger. What does she think of him? A little, and eh, it's still ugly, but a little better. A little bigger, 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 bigger. Oh. Oh, what a big hunk of a man, yeah. And then, what is this electron thing? Okay, so keep in mind that most of the size of an atom doesn't come from the nucleus, it comes from the electron cloud. This represents the outer edge of the electron cloud. So spin in place so they can see how big you are. So how big is he? He's huge. Why? Because he's so ugly. <laughs> the electrons are going, yuck. Now, who's the teeny, tiniest, most petite? Ryan. 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 Why? Where are his electrons? <laughs> Those electrons are sticking close to Ryan. Okay. His effective nuclear force is very small because he is so little. Over here, oh! What is his effective nuclear force like? Yeah. So his electrons are really close. All right, guys, spin in place so they can see your size. Okay, so what's happening in size as you go from left to right? Getting smaller. Getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Why are they showing different ways? Because they're boys, <laughs> and by definition, they're idiots. They're boys. Yeah. Boys All right. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> so, because of effective nuclear force, as you go from left to right, you've got little bitty Alec here, and then bigger Max, and then Stephen. Stephen. Who is next? Nobel. Then? Mark. Then? Mark. Then? Uh, Graham. Right? That's her. Bye. Okay, so what happens? So what happens here? Because 
this guy had such small effective nuclear force. So what happens to left, from left to right, to the size of an atom? It gets smaller. It gets smaller because why? The force is pointing. Because the well, as you go from left to right, what happens to the effective nuclear force? It gets bigger. Gets bigger because the nucleus gets bigger. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Okay. The other concept that you must understand is shielding effect. Shielding effect. Shielding effect. What is shielding effect? Well, once again, let's use a metaphor. Um, Noah, Kate Upton, good, gorgeous, yes, love her. Bad. All right. <laughs> okay. So we can say that Kate Upton has a very strong, effective nuclear force on Noah. Very attractive. Okay. So Kate Upton comes to you, Noah and says, Noah, I've seen your picture on Facebook, and you are, I thought you were cute on Facebook, on Instagram, but you in person are adorable. I'd like to go out with you every night. I want you to be my boyfriend. I want you to, I want to go play putt-putt with you and bowling and go shopping in the mall because let me tell you, you're adorable, but your sense of fashion is bad. That's okay. I will buy you some more clothes. I um, mean, she wants to go and have dinner with him. You know, she has all these romantic plans. So what does Noah have to I'm jealous. Okay. Uh, if, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, he does. Okay, you're going to ditch the girlfriend, right, and go with Kate? Yes. Yes. This is Kate. I won't tell. Okay. okay, if Noah's girlfriend is listening, this is just make-believe. But she, she, he is going to dump you and go with Kate just for the sake of this, of, of, of this metaphor. All right, so no, no, would it be best if we just use somebody else? Is she the jealous type? Okay. All right, so for three months, Noah, three months, it's you and Kate every night doing wonderful PG level things. PG, wipe the smile from your face. PG. Okay, so three months later, she comes up to you and says, Noah, you're, you're, <laughs> You're a really nice guy, and I love you, and I want you to stay my boyfriend, but I found two other guys, and I want them to be my boyfriend, too. So I will see you every three nights. Every three nights. Okay, okay. Noah, think about this. No Kate Upton or Kate Upton every three nights. Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. Okay, but notice there was a little bit of a hesitancy. Why? Is she as attractive, knowing that there's two other guys around, is she as attractive as she used to be? No, she's still gorgeous, right? But she's not as attractive. That is shielding effect. The more electrons are between you, the outer shell, and the nucleus, the more they're going to shield the effect of the effective nuclear force. Okay? So it continues on. So what would we find? When we were talking about hydrogen, it was just one to one, right? The nucleus and, and, uh, and one electron. So we found that hydrogen was teeny tiny. The electron was hovering very close to the nucleus. But when it was lithium, three boyfriends, what happened? Further away. Gr grosser. She's not gross. She's still Kate Upton. All right. Then sodium. She comes up to you and says, mm, I've met some other guys. I'll see you every 11 nights. Still okay. Okay, he is still okay with that, but is she as attractive no. as she used to be, considering there are ten guys between you and her? Don't be sick. 
All right, as we're going down to potassium, 19. She'll see you every 19 days. All right, going down to rubidium, 37. Okay. So you are the 37th electron. How much shielding is between you and Kate? I'm gone. Yeah. You're going to have a tendency to be gone. That's what we'll find. That when you're getting to be this big, the electron is easily removed because there's too much shielding effect. Too much. All right. Here we go. What is atomic radius? The distance between the nucleus and the outer shell of electrons. What's the problem with measuring atomic radius? You can't. You can't. You can't. Why? Because if you try and look for the thing, they're not going to be there. Awesome, Ryan. That's right. According to whose principle? Uh, no. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You can never know the exact location of any electron. So it is impossible to determine atomic radius, and yet they have. How? Because we do have microscopes that can see atoms. They create little bumps to represent atoms. So what they do is they take the distance between the two bumps and they cut it in half. And that's how they determine, that's how they determine the atomic radii. Okay? So, as you go from left to right, what happens to the atomic radius? Does anyone remember why? Because the ENF gets bigger. That's right. The nucleus gets bigger. The electrons are trapped in the same energy level, so they can't get any further away. There's only one place to go, and that's closer. So remember, this is Ryan, and this is Alec. Yes? Is there a factor other than size that affects the nucleus? No, it's, ma it's mainly the positive power of it. Wait, so why, why do they get smaller? There because there's more protons. Every step of the way, there's, you're adding a proton, so the nucleus is becoming more and more positive. Yeah. As you're going down, notice it gets bigger. Why? What's the explanation for this one? This is ENF, is the main reason. When you go down, it's shielding effect. Too many girlfriends, too many boyfriends, right, between you and Kate. All right, here's a video at least to help you understand. So that's atomic radius. As you go down a column, the atomic radius is adding energy levels. So this is lithium plus three, the third floor. Then you add the fourth floor. Then you add the fifth floor. Then you add the sixth floor. Okay, every step down you're adding another floor. Not only that, but you're adding a bunch of boyfriends. So the attractive power of Kate Upton, which is deep inside there, is weakened by the shielding effect. As you go from left to right, the electrons can't get any further away because they're all in the second energy level, second energy level. But the nucleus is getting bigger. As the nucleus gets bigger, its effective nuclear force is stronger. Therefore, the electrons get closer to it. So as you go from left to right, generally speaking, the atomic radius decreases. As you go down, the atomic radius increases.
Any questions on why it decreases as you go from left to right? Okay, well here's the explanation for why it increases as you go down. All right, so that's target 10.14, atomic radius. Hopefully now you'll know what happens as you go from left to right. You'll need to predict it. What I'll do is I'll give you elements. They're all in a column. And I'll say, hey, put them in increasing order. So all you have to do is put them going down. Or if I say, hey, put them in decreasing order, and make them go up. If I put them all in a row, hey, put them in increasing atomic radius. Uh, they're going to have to go from right to left. Decreasing, left to right, okay?